did I have to do this? I bet I just spent the money on a little bit of one. Don't stretch the paint. Yeah. That'll be the only flaw on this. Let me go <laughs> put my hand through a rust hole. Starting to make this a little cleaner. This is all taped up. Lucas had their engine brake break in additive, so I'm going to use some of this stuff too. Designed for hot rods, classic cars, race engines. You guys let me know down below what of those three this actually falls under because I don't have to. I'm going to say it's safe to say that's bad. All right, guys. Just poured a bunch of gas down there. Let's see if the thing will pop off at least. Welcome back to Robbie's Hobbies. Today we're finishing up the Gremlin, trying to get it back on the road. And we have to work on the exhaust still, finish up some brake lines, and do some tuning for the engine. Um, then, uh, well, the exhaust work you see me working on here uh, ended up ended up scrapping it all. The only thing I ended up keeping was the new mufflers I bought for it. The exhaust I built was from some free tubing I got off of a, a Silverado. And I thought that would be better since it was cheaper, but that ended up causing a lot more work for it for me than I needed. And there was a much simpler option if I just uh, spent a little more money. And you learn as you go along. So, but I did keep the mufflers that I the brand new mufflers I bought, and we'll get to that clip here, and uh, we'll continue on getting the Gremlin ready to be dri driven finally. Well guys, got a new camera finally. Got a GoPro. Hopefully this will help a little bit, but um, either way, we're opening up the mufflers here. I'm finally ready to bolt them in and see if uh, this works the way I hope I'm planning. So I got two of these. Flowmaster FX mufflers, I don't know. Judging by the reviews, they seem pretty decent online. And I wanted each side to have matching exhaust, so I went and had to get some new ones, so. Yeah, no. So I'm gonna see. So bolt in the way I'm hoping, and maybe we can figure out something finally. So maybe they'll actually have some exhaust. Oh man, I'm forgetting the terms. Got this doohickey installed. Um, got two of the brake lines installed. One's to the front left and one's all the way to the rear. I got that rear one done last night because I knew <clears throat> if I don't get that one done soon, I'm going to keep regret or dragging it out until, you know, like two weeks go by. So just got it done. Now I just gotta make a short one over to that side, and then the two short ones up, very short ones up to here. And, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna start ripping out all the old, because there's still some of that lingering around here. And I have no use for it, and it's just taking up space, so. I think that's gonna be next. Yeah, I'm gonna rip out that, and then I'm gonna run the, the new replacement along the firewall over to that. I really did the redid the rear brake lines when I did the rear brakes because it snapped both the lines so all that's new. It's literally after I get that brake hose in the back and this done the rest of these brake lines I'll have 100% new brakes um, that I've done in the last year here now and everything will be new so perfect. So I'll get you back here in a little bit. I guess I'm gonna flare this one in the car. 
got this handy little doodabber. Capri makes it, I guess. I can't remember. I couldn't remember. Oh, I think I saw this on Junkyard Diggs' video once, and he really liked it, and I really wanted a much nicer 3 16 tube bender, yeah, tubing bender, whatever. And this has been quite the nice purchase, honestly. Very happy with it. But yeah, it only does 3 16 I think there might be options for other sizes, but... I don't, I didn't get those, cause you know, that costs money. Pretty rare for me to splurge on something like this anyways. Been always use the, the cheapo stuff from Harbor Freight or um, O'Reilly's actually is the one that I had the best luck with. That one was decent. been doing a lot of daydreaming lately just trying to hope can't wait for this thing to get on the road hopefully it's soon this one gets your depth you set that in there and the um your tubing pushes up against it and you always have the perfect depths for flaring oh yeah perfect all right should be tight enough out. Now there's only one other fitting you use to uh, this tool to flare. You put grease, it comes with special grease, you put that on, on both ends. Feels like it's starting to bottom out there, and now I just crank it down till it bottoms out. This size labeled OP1. For the first step in a flare, so this will make a bubble flare. Perfect. Sorry about that. Camera cut out on me unexpectedly. Didn't realize it. But yeah, I don't know. Not a whole lot more I was going to show. OP1, which is the first part of a flare, and then this one's uh, 3 sixteenths, whatever. Regular double double flaring end. You just bottom out each side, and then uh, you're done. Pretty nice, handy little tool. I like it. Man, I'm glad I have that. That is pretty handy. You can do that in the car pretty easily. But yeah, we got the brake line installed. She looks snazzy, I suppose. Got all three. On the output, so you got the two fronts and the one to the rear. And yeah, we're all tightened up and everything. So next only thing left really is I'm gonna I'm gonna make the little fittings from here to here and here to here. And then otherwise I'm gonna have to bleed everything again because especially this reservoir has been empty for a long time. Yeah, I don't know. I guess that's about it though. Finally got those made up. Not perfect by any means, but they'll work just fine. So had to took me a lot longer than I figured because I, I kept making this too short and I just did not want to flex when I bolted in there. Yeah, so those were made up. I took them off for now, so I got a bleed system now. That's it. But all the brake lines are officially made, so huge win I would say. Already got this little thing bent up so should feed in there automatically yeah, I don't remember if I got the other one or not but something like that we're gonna do that and do stuff why not are you getting bubbles things from gravity be bleeding but yeah still bubbles all right guys well I actually have a little bit of a side bet kind of with my co-workers and they want me to try to get this to work tomorrow maybe I could do it I live pretty close to my workplace I'd say so uh, shouldn't be too hard to get there if I can get it to be acceptable under road conditions so for safeties and whatnot so 
First, I actually think I do need to sweep out this garage because I every time I roll underneath my garage or underneath the car, um, the the floor is either getting really pitted in spots or something. But the roll the rollers do not roll. It, it's like the one thing they could do. So, and they don't. So I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to sweep this. It is getting pretty grimy under there from rust flakes. Metal shavings, chips, I don't know, a lot of garbage. It's been a long time since I got swept out, so I think I'm going to pull it outside and maybe try to weld the exhaust outside, or I don't know, one either. We'll see. But yeah, either way, let's get this outside, see if it starts. And I can also check to make sure if it's overcharging or not, because I think it kind of is, but not really sure. I don't know. So. Yeah, let's get that done. Here we go. I guess the only thing I need to I want to check before I start this is see what kind of voltage I got here now and then when it starts because I feel like it might be high. 12.56 volts. Let's see if she starts. Let's see how easy she starts. I got one muffler kind of on, so we'll hear maybe a slight difference. Let's see if that, I don't think that really pumped anything, but let's try it. Okay, I see fuel moving. Let's make a mess with the, this gasoline. Give me some time here. I might just end up pushing it out. Great. to run but I need to get it outside I need to set the timing on this I think that could be what's off right now I really don't know I'm gonna try that though I know I accidentally bumped the, the timing maybe that's why I don't know maybe I messed it up I thought I put it right back where it was but hard to say all right, let's see if we can get this thing outside now. looks so much better already oh man there's so much stuff it's not even perfect i could have swept it again but it's still better than it was so we'll take it that is a uh, wonder why my my creeper wasn't rolling around worth a darn all right well let's see if we can get the timing set on that car and let's keep going well, another reason why I wanted to get the floor swept is so Leonard could be outside again. So I, don't, I felt like there's a lot of shavings and stuff on the ground, so didn't want to hurt his paws. Anywho, I was going to read the initial timing. 
yeah since everything's pretty much stock i was like oh that that should be easy and well the thing on the air cleaner i cannot read the initial timing that's the only thing i can't read pretty much well for the most part so anyways i looked online it looks like 10 to 15 or like 10 to 12 before top dead center so we're gonna try to aim for that sure all right let's try to start this thing and see if we can get the timing do about vacuum advance yet I only can find like two ports on the carburetor one looks like it's for the PCB valve or whatever and otherwise there's a port on the front but I don't know the port on the front don't seem right that don't seem like it doesn't seem like I have any vacuum at any rpm even crank up the rpms don't matter still doesn't so maybe something's plugged in there too I don't know but and also the battery is overcharging we get about 14.7 volts. Um, I don't know, I, don't, I guess that may not be terribly high, but it sounds, according to the internet, that's too high. Apparently it's like standard, like the highest of 14.4. Anything over that, you're overcharging, so. So yeah, that's great. Maybe I need a new voltage regulator. Maybe I have it wired completely wrong on the charging. I don't know, one or the other. And I got an oil leak in the cab because the oil pressure gauge leaks. Hopefully it starts up fine. Definitely should start easier than it was, so that's good. Well, um, I did some changing of the wiring. Maybe got it working right. We'll see. Let's see if I can start this. I've been charging the battery and stuff too, so hopefully it'll start it up just fine. And we'll see if maybe it's charging properly now. So I think I wasn't having the regulator activated or whatever. I don't know. We'll see. Let's try that. Guessing the voltage regulator on this is just not working, so I'll have to dig into that some more. But it looks like the voltage regulator is just on the side of well, it's just like that. It's just the voltage regulator, so I don't know. Let's see. I don't know what else to try, I guess, otherwise. So 
Yeah, so that's not ideal. Hmm. Well, I think I'm going to call it here for the night. Not working out, so. I think the charging system actually just might be fine. Some people, some parts online are saying 14.7 volts is fine. Some are saying 14.8 is almost okay. It just depends on how specific you get. And they say at 14.4... Is where the acid can boil out or something like that, so they don't want you to go too much more than that. But maybe it's fine at that. Maybe I'm just being a little too picky. But so got it back to how it was, because otherwise the dash light would not go off either. So it's back to how it was the first time. Should work either way. Calling it a night now. Didn't even get to start on the exhaust, but the garage is cleaner, so I guess not a complete waste. Well, I kind of lied, I guess. I'm going to try uh, one more thing, then I'm going to get ready for bed. I want to see if this hood fits. Because realistically, I can almost drive it as it is. And I would have basically just down pipes, but this thing's not terribly loud. I don't think I'd get in trouble with these, so we'll try it. If this goes on, then if this hood goes on just fine, maybe I'll just put the exhaust hanger on and then drive it tomorrow. That'd be, that'd be something. Do I like putting the hood on by myself? God. Can I? I think. I don't know. We'll try her. moment I am completely by myself so if I wanted someone to come over I don't know oh yeah it's also 11 o'clock at night so you know whatever there doesn't all that lovely rust just fall off Will the hood fit? Well, good thing the, cur the hood curves like this because I think it's going to fit just fine. Meh, that's pretty decent. There's a little tight gap on this side, but Nah, that's fine. Wow. Somehow my videos for the kick down cable install got corrupt and there wasn't too much to it really either way. The underside ended up being fairly simple. I just had to take a bolt out of the transmission to bolt in the one bracket down below, which I didn't realize the bolt was going to have red Loctite on it, but either way it still came out fairly simply and went back in and reinstalled no problem at all. And then the upper side did take a little bit of modification. It had to be cut in certain spots and uh, I think I had to drill out a couple spots as well. But otherwise the upper side wasn't too bad either. Um, next to the carburetor there. And then uh, yeah, that was all buttoned up and I had uh, um, it all working and it's nice to have the knowing that my transmission is going to shift properly just from that quick little install on that. Another day guys, back at it again, working on the Gremlin, finishing it up. Finally, hopefully, maybe we can go for a spin today. That would be the most ideal of the situation. I have not been able to really actually drive this thing, like ever. 
Then definitely nervous on uh, the exhaust being too loud, even though it probably isn't as loud as a lot of the trucks in this area, but anywho. I would feel better about it being a little quieter. So, I got the exhaust all done. But now, we gotta do an oil change, and then I think I can drive it. Let's get this done. Okay. Gremlin's first oil change, ain't this cute? It's like baby photos or something, I don't know. Oh, great. Of course, I over torqued it. Because, you know, everyone's losing a drain plug on these things. Uh huh. Had a little scraping installing the motor. That's fine. All right, big reveal. Is it going to be glittery? It should be. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a lot of glitter in the center. Oh, look at that little milkshake stream or something. Uh, I did loosen a bolt on the front of the timing cover, so I did lose a little coolant out that way, so I wouldn't be surprised if some went into the oil too. But, yeah. It don't look bad. A little shimmery. A little shimmer. Nothing that bad though, nothing I didn't expect. That's a, it's quite a bit of shimmer. Hmm. All right, cool. All right, let's see if we can get this oil filter off. Such an expensive oil filter for something that I'm just gonna run for, you know, a little bit of time. Oh my god, oh we're tightening this too, god dang, I'm pretty sure I put it on by hand. Did I cross thread it by hand? Don't think so. Oh, not that bad. Light, I need you over here. Well, that's the after effect. No, oh, a little shimmer. Nothing crazy. Looks decent to me. Cool. Now I get the new one installed and get the oil topped off. Finally getting her back on the ground. Nice and hard. Perfect. That works. Alright. I just gotta get some uh, oil back in it. And we're set. It's nice to have this giant tube that will fill up. And what I'm going to use for oil, I'm just going to use this, add some Rizaline zinc additive supplement stuff, and some Rotella. T4 heavy duty diesel oil. That'll work. This is actually what at least Google and a lot of people online seem to recommend for like these AMC 360s. So I'm just going to run this for now since it's going to be another low mileage and then I have to change oil again so this will be good for now weird trick from vice grip garage was the if you need this open you just smack it on the hood latch hanging above you I thought it was so funny when he did it but I do it all the time because it's so much more convenient than trying to jab your finger through there Weird trick, but it actually does make it easier, so that's nice. No funnel! I've actually cut down this fill tube. I could have had it even taller, or I 
would not need a funnel at all. You know, it makes oil changes easy, so that's not bad. Pretty handy, considering I'm lazy, so no funnel's kind of nice. Holy smokes. I either nailed it or I need to or I just need to wipe off the stick to I'll tell actually where it's at. Wow. That needs just half a quart. That's pretty darn good. For completely guessing. Thought I overfilled it though, so can't say too much. I had a little more little and she's good. First oil change in the books. All right, guys. Well, she's pretty much dark out, so that sucks. But we're gonna we're gonna take this and try to start it, and hopefully it starts better than it did last time, and uh, yeah, maybe go for a spin. Actually, I got some wiper blades. I want to throw them on just because creature comforts, and I'm that confident about this thing. Not really, but I mean, it makes me feel like I'm that confident. Might as well throw on these cheap wipers I got probably on sale. I don't remember. Oh, they were on sale. God, I love that. Just like a Midwestern thing, I think. Just uh, got got to brag about how I bought it on sale. Got this on clearance. Nope, not quite clear. But they were cheaper than normal. I know it's been ages, but release. Let's try the other side. Oh, that's good. So the wipers don't even work. I gotta grease that. Do bit, whatever. Yeah, I bought these on sale at the Farm and Fleet. Because, you know, this definitely falls in that category. Farm and Fleet. For Pete's sakes, do I need the O'Reilly's people to install these? I, I don't understand. There we go. A little more finesse. Cool. These are neat. I kind of want to like rebuild these, but I don't know if that's even possible. So for now, we'll just get thrown in a box and forgotten about for the next 10 years. Then thrown up later. Look at that. That doesn't fit with this, but you know it's better than metal scraping on here because it looks like I already got a nice scuff going up that side of the windshield. There we go. That was the trick. Stay. If you smack the glass, I wouldn't be upset. I don't, I don't know. We'll see if that, uh, I think they work. As soon as that has that scrape, but I don't remember for sure. I think I tested them. All right, first time trying to start with the, the new exhaust. All right, Let's see how it starts. If I uh, twist on the positive cable first, I guess. Not enough, not enough connection. See fuel pumping, but it's very slow. It's gonna pop off now. Kind of pop off.
far from home, so I need to call for help. I can. Uh, that just reminds me, I should probably grab jumper cables before I leave, just in case. But oh, I got a very crappy jump pack that I bought just a year ago, but still doesn't jump almost anything. So between that and jumper cables, I think I'd be fine. Let's try it. Is it worst thing that could happen? We'll make it. That's fine. I'll, let you, I'll update you when I make it to the gas station. Made it. No problem. Let's see if the gas tank hole leaks at all. Oh, probably need keys. Dang it. Here's the real test. Let's see if it'll start or if I'll embarrass myself. starts up, puff of black smoke out the exhaust pipe, so, so that's good. Alright, I got right now my book, re engine rebuilt at 81,000 miles. Yep, mm -hmm. that seems about right. Cool. Up to about 20 pounds, oh, about like 25, I guess. So whatever around there and she's running nice and cool that used to be off i think it is charging otherwise i don't think i would have been able to start it put like five gallons of fuel in and it still says empty so that's probably not working but that's fine baby steps cool made it back home just fine it's pretty it's running great honestly so that's awesome it's all, I'm coming up on dang near two years of work of owning this thing. And finally about, I don't know, pretty close to having it roadworthy. Definitely got some issues. Maybe I'll try to get this fender replaced for a cruise. I'm hoping I'll take this on a nice Castle car cruise. I don't know. How many miles? I don't know. 50, 100 miles? I don't know. I have no idea. But it's like a couple hours basically. And just a, uh, a short little jaunt for part of the day. And then we hang out and party and do car stuff uh, down at the Castle party, uh, Park. Hoping to do that this year with this. I got to take the Thunderbird last year. And it did fantastic. No issues whatsoever. Hopefully this one will be ready. I don't know. That would be cool. Well, it's another day. So far, all I've really gotten done is I wiped down the seats. And they look pretty good. I'm hoping I can actually fix these tears. That'd be nice. This is already starting to sag a little bit from me sitting on it. A little bit I have, and I wiped down the steering wheel and stuff. Yeah, floors, I, I guess I vacuumed the floors. I didn't wipe anything down really too much other than the oil that was leaking from the oil pressure gauge, but... Oh, that's about it. I got a bunch of accessories in the back, just in case. You never know. Whatever, you know. But yeah, vacuumed out the floor down here too. That's about all I've done so far. I think I, uh, I checked the, the, these wheels are torqued. I'm pretty sure I did do it, but I just wanted to make sure I didn't have anything loose. But they're so rusty as it is that they weren't going to spin freely anyways. But that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that they weren't super loose or something weird. And I'm going to throw the dog dish hubcaps back on. On the front ones at least. I think that will look nice. Nicer than what I got right now. 
I don't know. I think these look neat. That's better than that, I feel like. So. I love that because these are these are actually Ranger rims and tires, but whatever. I don't know. It looks perfect. I could use a little cleaning, not gonna lie, but it's not bad. It looks pretty decent. I should paint this up a little bit, but oh, have you seen the car? It, you know, whatever. It's fine. Let's throw this on the other side. Probably good. Sure. I don't know. I've never, I've never even put these kind of on before. I tried to wipe them down, but I don't know. I looks better. It's not bad. It could be better, but it's not bad. I like it. Let me know what you guys think. Is that better with the hubcaps? I feel like it is. Or should I just paint them and then they'll be fine? Paint the rim and then they'll be fine? I don't know. But now she really does need a bath. I'm probably not gonna do that tonight, but soon. Cause I don't know. I got I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do. Cause I can't. I don't want water constantly getting in this stuff. That would not be ideal. Oh, maybe I should just put the weather strip in what's there and ignore it. I'd, I feel like the gap's still gonna be there, so water just gets in there anyways, but I don't know. We'll see. Cool. I mean, the only thing I really would like to, I really do not like this hole here. This is gonna have to be probably one of the first things I will address. Uh, you know what? Hang on, we'll get, we'll get this fixed. I say chrome gets you home, so. Yep, I'm gonna use this uh, redneck chrome, or I think Vice Grip calls it poverty chrome. One or the other. I don't know. It's all the same chrome, depending on the, the manufacturer. But yeah, so I do not want water constantly falling in there. There we go. Uh huh. Uh huh. Look at that. Fantastic. And you can barely see the manufacturer name on that. That's that's even better. So cool. I guess we'll, we'll just do that. That, that looks that looks alright. She's uh I mean I don't know how else to say it. it's it's rough, so it's 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 fine. It'll work. It'll keep the moisture out at least, so that's good. Yep, I don't know. That's probably a dumb idea, but I, I think I'm gonna put some more chrome, I guess, back uh, along here too. Just because there is, that's a giant hole. You get, have you guys seen how big this is? Like, like I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna spray some rust preventative down in there just to, just because it's already open, so why not? Same here. The other one is that one up there. Uh, another one right there that's I don't know it's you got a plan for this stuff but it's just gonna take time I don't know I might as well keep her somewhat waterproof I don't want more water down in there and let's be real it looks it looks bad it looks really bad because it is really bad Installing waterproofing right now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Probably gonna find out right after installing this that duct tape is very bad on metal or something. I don't know. Something ridiculous. Seems like that's how it goes. I do something what I think is right and then find out that is the exact opposite of what you should do because that's really bad for it. Only one way to find out. I'm making mistakes. Sure. 
That looks just bad enough to work. Uh huh. Sweet. All right, well, got the drain plug out of the rear axle here. And there's moisture on it, but she's low, so that's good, I suppose. It actually didn't take much to get off, so that makes me feel like maybe it was looked at at one point. At least I'm telling myself that. So I got this. Ugh stick with this filler neck thing or stick this bottle 80w90 from castrol I don't know. looks like it should do a thing and i can just float right up in there oh we got her She's pouring out it looks like there might be oh, i thought i saw some shimmer but that don't, look, that don't look bad at all, actually. It looked like it took about, I don't know, half a quart, something like that. That was terrible, but, yeah, that'll work. Tighten this up, and maybe take it for a spin. Oh, yeah. Doing some late night, late cruising already. It's not actually that dark out, but it looks like it. Let's see, we got three gears. Got one. We got the gremlin back in the garage again guys it's uh i think it's good to go for now there's not a whole lot more i want to do with it and just uh i mean mechanically wise it's pretty sound um brakes seem to be okay i gotta do some more adjustment on the proportioning valve thing and that's about it it's pretty good though i'm pretty happy with this this is awesome just gotta do some shakedown runs and see how she runs but I think we're gonna be fine so hopefully we'll have her ready for a cruise coming up there's a cruise uh, i gotta see how many miles it's gonna be but yeah we got uh it's a it's gonna be a couple hour drive all, all all said and done for everything so we gotta get some shakedown runs on this so we can make sure she makes it through that i think it'll be fine but i'd rather do some more runs so i don't just have this fully untested and throw it into a big cruise like that so heck yeah i think that's that's gonna do it for this episode though guys so awesome thank you guys for watching uh we'll see you later take her easy